come to the meeting, and if you want to leave, then fine. No. It's Christmas Day. We're the family now. We're staying at home. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at instances where TV characters got whacked. In addition to the mob, we're including cartels and crime families as long as a successful hit is executed. We're telling you up front that this list is nothing but spoilers, so don't shoot the messenger. Well? Number 10, Nick Augustine, Justified. When Theo Tonin makes his son Sammy the head of the crime family, underling Nick Augustine plots to take out the new boss and assume control. Look, we're just waiting for the plane. We'll be back in Detroit before breakfast, and I'll take care of it when I get back there. The overly ambitious criminal underestimates two people, however. First, there's Raylan Givens, who's willing to turn a blind eye as long as justice is served. Since Givens is a lawman, though, he gives Augustine one last chance to exit without spilling any blood. I pulled a bread off the big fella. What are you carrying? <laughs> oh, I don't have a gun. Maybe you should get one. Why? So you can have a reason? You already gave me a reason. Augustine not only turns Givens' offer down flat, but he threatens his family. But I'll be back for your family. You had a chance to save him this morning, but instead, you took out three of my guys. He also makes the mistake of underestimating Sammy, who learns of Augustine's planned coup via Givens. We don't even see Augustine as his limo is riddled with bullets, emphasizing that although he talked big, he was never truly boss material. Number 9. Pete the Rock, Invernizzi, Tulsa King When we're introduced to Pete Invernizzi, his best years are behind him, but that doesn't mean he'll be stepping down as head of the family anytime soon. Death isn't coming quickly enough either. Despite his declining health, next in line is his son Charles, or Chicky, who has grown increasingly frustrated with the Don's decisions as of late, namely keeping Dwight Manfredi alive. One day, you're gonna be boss of this family. Confronting his dad in the bath, Chicky concludes that if he's going to get Dwight out of the way, his father must meet an unfortunate accident first. Although Chicky has always been scum, drowning his own father goes to show that there's no line he won't cross in pursuit of power and vengeance. All bets are off, and so is Chicky's toupee. Number 8. Floyd Gerhardt, Fargo With her husband unable to fulfill his duties following a stroke, matriarch Floyd takes over the Gerhardt family. Floyd is no stranger to loss, but the tail end of her life brings the most misfortune. When we reach the motel, I want you with a vehicle. Make sure you're safe. Her family and everything they built ultimately collapse at the hands of a few unexpected sources. In one final twist, Floyd finds that she's been betrayed by her eldest son's enforcer, Hansi Dent. In what seems like a rescue mission, the silent but deadly hitman sends what remains of the Gerhard syndicate to their doom. As Floyd realizes that they've been led into an ambush, Hansi cuts the head off of the snake. Even if Floyd had survived this inside job, there'd be little left of her family's dynasty to preserve. Number 7. Ruth Langmore, Ozark Despite their differences, Marty Bird comes to view Ruth as more than a business partner. By the series finale, she's like a surrogate daughter to him. This makes it all the more tragic when Ruth is thrown under the bus. How'd you find out? Claire Shaw told me. Navarro cartel head Camilo Elisontro learns that the reckless Ruth was responsible for the death of her son, although she remains clueless about the Bird's involvement. Not seeing a future where they'll all survive, Marty and Wendy stay silent as Ruth drives to her inevitable downfall. Your son was a murdering bitch. And now I know where he got it from. Strong-willed till the end, Ruth accepts her fate without begging for mercy or implicating the birds. It was a controversial exit for a fan-favorite character, but one that left us speechless all the same. Number 6. John Shelby, Peaky Blinders In addition to World War I, John Shelby made it through three brutal series of this British crime drama. The fourth series commences with a black hand spelling the beginning of the end for John. Arthur, you checked your post. I'll just go serve the black hand. We didn't expect his end to come so quickly, though. On Christmas Day, brother Michael encourages John and his family to seek refuge at the Peaky Blinders base. Matriarch Esme is reluctant to leave, convinced that they can take care of themselves. Tell Tommy Shelby we can look after ourselves. Tommy says that they could come for us today. Esme. She's immediately proven wrong as the Changreta family pays a visit. Outnumbered in a drive-by shooting, John and Michael are riddled with bullets. 
While Michael lives to fight another day, John makes his last stand on the countryside estate that promised him and his family a fresh start. We died together, once before. Arthur, me, Danny Wizbang, Betty Thorne, Jeremiah, and John. Number five, Ben Urich, Daredevil. Wilson Fisk isn't lacking in enforcers, but he's not afraid to get his own hands dirty. If anything, he revels in the opportunity to put people in their place, especially when it's personal. Upon being fired from the New York Bulletin, Ben Urich's day goes from bad to fatal. Still determined to expose Fisk, Urich suddenly comes face to face with the rising kingpin. I wrote a lot of stories in my years pushing ink. You know how many times people have threatened me. While Fisk isn't thrilled about the story, he might have let it slide if only Yurik hadn't enlisted his mother as a source. As Fisk wraps his hulking hands around Yurik's throat, it becomes clear that he didn't drop by to make threats. So I am not here to threaten you. I'm here to kill you. <laughs> Yurik's death finds Fisk at his most unpredictable and unhinged, reminding us that nobody's safe from him. <laughs> Number 4, Tortuga, Breaking Bad Working as a cartel informant can be deadly, especially if you're played by Danny Trejo. Despite his brief screen time, Tortuga is among Trejo's most memorable characters thanks in part to his bonkers demise. Que chulada! En serio, te gusta? Oh, me encanta, Eve. Que padre, mascota! It's a slow day for the DEA until the tortoise, of all animals, escalates matters. The tortoise isn't alone, carrying Tortuga's head atop its shell. Fitting, seeing how Tortuga is Spanish for tortoise. Although the other agents laugh at Hank for running away, he had the right idea with the tortoise bringing one more surprise. Hey! Welcome to- We later see how the cartel did Tortuga in via flashback. What's the only thing more poetic than putting Tortuga's head on a tortoise? Taking out a Danny Trejo character with a machete. Ah! 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 Number 3, Cristobal Cifuentes. Barry. When we were first introduced to NoHo Hank, we didn't expect him to ever make us cry. As Barry progresses, Hank's star-crossed romance with Bolivian mob leader Cristobal becomes one of his dark comedy's few bright spots. After overcoming so much together, a happy ending appears to be in grasp for the couple. I'll make it up to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I love you. I love you, Cristobal. After Hank is pulled back into the Chechen mob, though, Cristobal decided that he can't follow him down this path. I, I wanted to be legitimate. <sighs> When you say that word, you sound naive. As Cristobal walks out on Hank, we all know in the pit of our stomachs what's coming. We're given a fleeting glimmer of hope when the door opens. Alas, it isn't Cristobal returning to his love. Instead, a hitman escorts Hank outside where his worst fear is realized. Sorry, Hank. We were hoping that wouldn't happen. Number two, Jimmy Darmody, Boardwalk Empire. From the first episode, the dynamic between bootlegging politician Nucky Thompson and protege Jimmy Darmody is among the driving forces behind this prohibition period drama. I know it's a lot. Did I not tell you to slow down? I tried to give you money. I tried, I tried to, to tell you I'm not a kid anymore. Imagine our surprise when the second season ended with a final confrontation between the two main characters. After trying to have Nucky assassinated, Jimmy shows up to a meeting knowing full well that it's a trap. Jimmy appears ready to die with dignity. But the conflicted look in Nucky's eyes suggests that his paternal feelings may prevail. Just try to make yourself calm. You had everything going. Breathe, Nuck. Your whole life. No such luck as Nucky pulls the trigger twice. Jimmy's death drastically changed the course of the series, for better or worse. Whatever your thought of the following seasons, few TV deaths have been so shocking yet so inevitable. You don't know me, James. You never did. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Adriana La Serva, The Sopranos Honestly, this countdown could have been solely comprised of Sopranos characters. Since we like to mix things up though, we're singling out the hit that hurt the most. Although we root for Tony, it's impossible not to empathize with Adriana. Falling in love with Christopher only to get roped in as an FBI mole, Adriana finds herself trapped in an impossible situation. With the walls closing in, Adriana finally confesses to Christopher, who turns to Tony. This is a lot to process, Adriana. I gotta think. 
I'll be back in a little while. When Silvio picks up Adriana, we know that he isn't taking her to the hospital as promised. They'll keep him a few days, maybe. Observation, do some tests, who knows. Blinded by her love for Christopher, Adriana can't bring herself to accept the truth until Silvio drives them into the woods where she makes an unsuccessful plea for her life. <laughs> Which TV mob hit will you never forget about? Let us know in the comments. I gotta sit down. I feel like I can't stand. Is that okay, Tony? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.